In this fourth video of our series, I'll briefly review a sketch that emits Morse code on the onboard LED. Since it's not a very practical sketch, I'll mainly focus on how the task scheduler library is used to provide the timing of the Morse code pulses. I'll also include a sketch derived from that one that emits sentences on two LEDs at different word per minute rates to demonstrate the real power of the task scheduler library. The basic approach is to read a sentence of words from the console and parse out the characters. Then convert each character to the corresponding code, which is a few dots and dashes, and output the code as flashes of the LED. The basic unit of time in Morse code is the dot. Rules dictate that a dash is the length of three dot durations. The interpulse interval is one dot duration, the intercharacter interval is three, and the inter word duration is seven dot durations. So once we turn the LED on for the next pulse of a character, we need to decide when to schedule a task to turn it off, which could be one dot interval later for a dot or three dot intervals later for a dash. When the task to turn the LED off gets dispatched, it turns the LED off and then schedules the task to continue processing. The next time for that task to continue, will either be the inter-character interval or the inter-pulse interval. Let's look at the sketch. Here are the two scheduled task definitions, one to continue outputting pulses and one to turn off the LED. For now, they are merely placeholders because their next times to dispatch are set to never. The code in the sketch will activate them as we'll see shortly. In setup, we read a sentence from the console and proceed to output the characters. Loop, of course, only contains a call to the dispatcher. The continue output function calls the turn on LED function if there are any more pulses in the current character's code, or else fetches the next character from the sentence, converts it to Morse code, and then calls turn on LED. Turn on LED turns the LED on and schedules the task to turn it off after the proper pulse duration for a dot or a dash. The turn off LED task of course turns the LED off and then schedules the continuation of outputting after a delay depending on whether the end of a pulse has been reached or the end of a character. Notice that there are no calls to the delay function which is not allowed when using the task scheduler library. Instead, we execute a scheduled task which schedules the next one to continue the work. This necessitates using global variables such as an index into the sentence to keep track of things rather than passing local variables to chained function calls. Here's what the output of the sketch looks like. This next sketch extends our Morse code example to output sentences on two LEDs at different word per minute rates simultaneously. At first glance it might look quite a bit more complex, but it isn't really because it uses exactly the same approach as our previous example from which it was derived. Recall that we used global variables to keep track of where we were in the process of outputting pulses and characters. We need to do the same here, but separately for each LED. I've declared a blinker struct to contain all the variables needed for an LED. Obviously it must contain the pin number, plus the sentence and its index and the current character code and so forth, but it also contains the two scheduled task definitions we need, one to continue the outputting and one to turn off the LED and reschedule the continuing output. I've chosen to allow these scheduled task definitions to just use the default constructor, so we'll update the objects later in set, uh, setup. Here we define our two blinker structs and establish their separate LED pins and dot durations. Those constants are defined in the example constants header file. Our setup is basically the same as before, except that we have to deal with each of our blinkers. To make the sketch more general, I've actually put the blinkers into an array. Therefore, it'd be easy to add more LEDs. As before, we need to initialize the hardware pin for each LED. Because the scheduled task objects and the blinkers were constructed using the default constructors, we'll need to tailor them a bit. 
Notice that we're using the sched task t version of task object so that the dispatcher can pass a parameter and we set that parameter to the address of the struct containing the task object. We'll soon see that this enables a scheduled task to access its own variables and to call member functions on a scheduled task objects. After reading a sentence from the console for each blinker, setup calls a function to fetch the first character and begin output. The other functions perform just as in our previous sketch that output Morse code on a single LED. But you'll see that in this sketch, these functions are passed a pointer to the particular blinker, that is the LED, that it should deal with. So the code is virtually the same with the addition of pointers to qualify where the variables are. Because a pointer to a blinker is passed, functions don't need hard-coded references to global variables or objects. Based on our constants defined for next and period, the top LED is outputting Morse code at 5 words per minute and the bottom one at 13 words per minute. I hope you found these tutorial videos useful. If you care to make a small donation using your PayPal account, I'd really appreciate it. See the notes below. Good luck and let me know in the comments what applications you found for the Task Scheduler Library.